perceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the body here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports My next UK. guest is making his long away to return to the UFC. Going into enemy territory, taking on Tyson Pedro at UFC 284 next Saturday. It's Modestus Bukaukas back here on the program. Modestus, how are you, man? Doing very, very well. Thank you. Couldn't be any better, my man. Yes. It's crazy. We had our interview, what, three weeks ago? And, you know, obviously things went well with Cage Warriors. And here you are getting this call. Just uh, start first with the fact, were you surprised to get this call? Um, yeah. I mean, yes, because of actually the, the whole situation of how it actually came about. Because I'd been sort of eyeing up a couple of cards, like, you know, just like looking at it. Like, obviously, because nothing had been set in stone for any fights just yet. I was just training, staying in shape. You know, as you can see, the face is considerably skinny. So, um, yeah, like I was already like, you know, like just training, like doing my thing. And then I was like eyeing up a couple of cards, just seeing where the light heavyweights were in the cards that were coming up and ones that were obviously outside of the U.S., and um, it's funny enough it, that that was one of the fights I was looking at. I was like, hmm, potentially if something happened, like maybe I could, you know, stir this up a little bit. So, um, yeah, and then lo and behold, it happened. So it, it was a bit of a shock. But again, just like when I got signed the first time, I knew that this was where I wanted to go. So I knew it was only a matter of time, whether it had been one fight or whatever or done straight away, I knew it was going to happen at some point. When did you find out? That would, that would be my question as well, because, I mean, this fight's next Saturday, right? Yeah, bro. It was um, it was last last Wednesday. Yeah. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's very, like, like, literally, things are turned around, like, 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 you know, so quickly. It's crazy. But so I was, it was like the middle of the day, yeah, and Jason, actually, my manager from Iridium, he, he messaged me and said, um bro, Cage Warriors have offered you a fight for March 24th. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, listen, if the UFC don't want me yet, then we'll go and bag another body. I uh, had a conversation with him. He said, look, it's only seven weeks away. You know, you're already training. Like, let's let's go let's go build up your resume even more, you know? So I was mm -hmm. like, cool. And I was already set in my head like, okay, cool. We're, 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 we're going to go fight on Cage Warriors again. No problem. Let's, let's, let's go and do this. Went to training and then... I, I was coming back home and it's quite far for me to get home from training. It usually takes me about an hour and a half. So, and near where my house is, I've got like this diameter around my house where there's absolutely fuck all signal, like no okay. signal whatsoever. Like it's literally freaking in the woods. Do you know what I mean? I, I live, yeah. I live out in, in, uh, in, in wonderland or something. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. just before that, ju literally just before I was entering that zone, which is literally like five minutes from my house, I get a vo uh, uh, a video call from Jason. I don't normally get video calls from from my manager um, unless it's like very important. But at the time, I thought, you know, like what could this be? I literally swerved over to the side of the road. <laughs> you know what I mean, pulled up somewhere where I could because I'm like, obviously, I can't go too much further because there's going to be no signal. Picked up the phone, and um, he said, you know, like what's what's your weight like? And I said, uh, you know, at least I'm not fat. You know, I'm like, you know, between. 219 220 so you know I'm, I'm doing all right and then it goes uh yeah you're fighting in uh in in australia in two weeks time and i'm like no way i, I like literally it was like honestly one of the most it was probably more emotional than actually when i got signed the first time around like i was in tears man because all that you know that situation that i had to go through and like generally there was one point thinking it's such a large mountain to climb you know what I mean? Like looking down, being from at the top all the way down to the bottom, then looking back up it again. I was like, you know, how long is this going to take? What's going to happen? And for me to go through all of that and then find like within 16 months, like this, this you know, this is kind of like unheard of for it, for it to happen really that fast. And obviously I had like, you know, two, two, two wins, but yeah, man, like I, I was literally, like I say, in tears, I got back home. Um, I, I was literally like, well, I was playing like some, some mad like witcher music in, in in my car and i was literally just screaming like yes like yeah. literally screaming non-stop the five minutes back to my house went upstairs um saw my stepmom i told her like listen i've got to tell you something's very important she thought she was like worried she's like well what you got to tell us and then my dad was in the other room he's like uh -huh. I i'm like dad like i've got something important to you come into the sitting room and he's like what's the fuck my body hurts 
you know, I have a hard day. Why, why do you need to take, you know what I mean? Like in, in, yeah. in his Eastern European accent. Yeah. And then, you know, he, he jumps out of bed and then, yeah, you know, obviously I tell them what had happened. And then, yeah, we're just both just hugging each other and crying and just, you know, just embracing that moment. So it was very special this time around because, like I said, this is where I knew I wanted to be. I said it was going to happen and it finally happened. So it's just, yeah, a whirlwind of emotion. Is this your first time fighting like in someone else, like you're fighting in enemy territory, but actually like flying to someone else's country and, and fighting someone like that? Have you ever experienced that before? Uh, I mean, I, I guess you could say, I don't know. I guess, you know, Khalil was technically, you know, he's from yeah, he's Vegas, American. So yeah, but not, not necessarily his like home. Yeah, I guess, I, got, I guess that, I that would be kind of similar. Yeah. Yeah, I got what you're saying. But yeah, no, <laughs> I, I know. And also this is my first fight in front of like a pro legitimate crowd. That's like, true. I'm talking like, you know, 15,000, however many people are going to be there at, at, at the event on such a big card as well. So I know obviously the Australian fans are going to be amped up. Obviously that guy's from, from, from home. So I know I'm going to get booed out there. I know I'm going to be like, you know, like the, the bad guy in, in this whole thing. And do you know what? I just, that, that kind of fires me up. That, that kind of, that kind of, you know, fuels me. You know what I mean? Like a freaking... I freaking love it, man. Like, it's just, imagine that you're going into enemy territory. You're going out on your horse with your, with, with your sword and your shield and your, you know, you're going out there to do the business. So yeah, it's, it's exciting to be honest. Like I, I'm just going to embrace the whole, the whole situation. Style wise. How are you looking at this fight? I'm sure you had a chance now to look up Tyson and, and all that stuff. Uh, how do you feel like you match up against him here? Yeah. So he's uh, obviously he's very well-rounded, you know, he's, he's got good stand up, got good ground and got good wrestling. So obviously, you know, he's, he, he's good in all areas. Um, however, uh, as I say that there, there are particular attributes, which I feel that are better than his, um, that there, there's certain parts of his game where I feel like I could exploit same way as I, I believe he probably think he has about me, but this is where we go out and stand out in the middle of the cage and, and do the business. So, but, um, yeah, like I say, I think, I think this would just be a very entertaining fight. It will, it will definitely be back and forth, but I definitely think that I, I can put it on him. I can put the pressure on him and, um, you know, make make him make mistakes, which are going to be in my favor. And, bro, I'm always going in there to finish. So, you know, however long it takes, wh whatever i got to do, I'm going out there to get the finish at the end of the day. Have you looked at the betting odds? Have you, have you seen what they are right now? From what I've heard from one of my friends, friends he said that um at the beginning it was like something like seven to one yeah like, it was I actually saw 10 to one believe it or not which is crazy oh, yeah. like he was like minus 1000 the line now i just looked at it like literally before he hopped on i think now he's almost like a two to three to one favorite but how how surprising is that like again i know tyson's a great fighter but i like seeing that i'm like what, what like 10 to one that's crazy yeah I, I mean i wouldn't have expected myself to be such a massive underdog i mean look obviously <laughs> people you know, people don't really know, like, you know, what they did. Obviously, they've seen my first UFC run wasn't, you know, wasn't the best run that I could have had, um, you know, could have had much better performance. They only remember the really bad situations, you know what I mean? Like the Khalil loss and the and the Jimmy Crute loss. But you look at the Oleg Shechuk fight and, and the and the Mihalidis fight, those fights I looked, you know, like like really good against these the these this high level of competition. So, obviously, people are obviously quick to put that to the side and, you know, I had a pretty lackluster performance against uh, Lee Chadwick. Although, you know, I won the fight. I did what I had to do to get the win. It wasn't my best performance. So, but then, you know, going out and, and knocking out Chuck Campbell in the fourth round, I mean, like, you know, you would have thought that would have, you know, made me seem a bit more. But listen, they'll find out sooner or later. So, you know, I kind of enjoy, I, I enjoy the, the, the fact about being the underdog because actually in my last two fights, I was the favorite. And I think even a, like some of the fights in the UFC, I was the favorite. So, you know, like for me, I, I actually, like I said, I enjoy it. I enjoy it because it's my chance to go out and prove everyone wrong. Training camp, who have been some of the main guys you've been working with uh, for this sort of mini camp going into this fight? Yeah, so I've had um, Lucas Klinger um, and uh, Danny Batten at BST. Obviously, those guys have been helping me out a lot. Raymond as well from over there. Um, those guys have helped like for a brief moment, obviously, to, like towards like maybe the last like three weeks, two weeks, two weeks, three weeks. So obviously, that guy's really big. He's about 104 kilo, really good guy. But the main... Uh, training partner that I have that's been a really massive, um, massive help and massive influence. Like overall, is uh, Will Curry, who um, you know, as you, I don't know if you've seen, but he's fighting yeah. for the belt in Cage Warriors and in, in the middleweight division. So 
He's, you know, very cerebral, great fighter. We're on the same wave. He's like my little brother. And it's amazing to have that kind of relationship in the training environment. And also it blends so well because now my dad is sort of taken over his training as long as, as well as, as well as my training. So we're all training together. We've got this great vibe. They're the two guys that are going out with me uh, to Australia. So, you know, we've got a great, a great group, a great energy. And yeah, he's been one of my main training partners. You know, I have had some, some other guys that obviously helping out with jujitsu and wrestling and stuff like that. But if you're talking to like specifically MMA, you know, obviously as a training partner, Will has been, you know, the main guy and it's been absolutely amazing to have him with me. And like I say, Lucas Klinger, um, who, who's fought on some big shows before he's, he, he's been a real help as well. So great coaches, great teammates. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, definitely moving forward towards a good performance. Geography was never my thing in school. How long, is, like, what's the travel time for you to get to Australia? Like how long is it going to take? So the first flight, so I'm, I'm taking two flights. I think there's one stop off and, and it's like an hour and it's like an hour and a half, I think layover. But, um, the first one is 12 hours and 55 minutes. And then the second one is like five hours. And from the people that I've, that I've talked to, they said that the five hour one is the one that's long. Do you know what I mean? Cause you've already got to get, 12 hours out of the way and then you've got to get another five hours but on the way back apparently it's like 17 hours like straight up so i'm just like oh my god being in a plane for that long but you know at the end of the day it's all for a good cause it's all for you know oh it's just it like makes me so excited and ecstatic thinking of the whole journey and like doing all of that like go going into enemy territory going into a different country somewhere that i've never been before it's just Sort of like this is life, you know what I mean? What a sick life to be living, you know. Does that alter the weight cut a bit just with so much travel time? And you try and maybe cut more weight at home and then you know do the traveling because I know you retain a lot of water when you're traveling on the plane. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't think I'm really too bothered about that because I stay quite lean anyways. Um, just during this is one thing that I've I've gen, like genuinely made a more of a conscious effort is to just to be in better shape or better physical shape so i'm never i'm never blowing up far past 220 do you know what i mean i'm always the worst i'll get is about 220 and if if that i'll be a bit less like you know maybe two between 217 but i reckon by the time we fly i'll probably be about 215 and then you know by the time we get there okay yeah you might hold a little bit of water but you know you get used to the environment you've got a bit of like you know maybe a, a, a couple of days doing our training sessions diet blah 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 it'll be it'll be a pretty easy weight cut for me how's this fight playing out on february 11th i think it's going to be an explosive matchup it's going to be very entertaining uh there's going to be a lot of shots thrown it's going to be um, a barn burner for the fans for sure um, we're definitely going to put it all out there on the line uh, again I know he's going to go for the finish and I'm going to go for a finish so you know but like I say I think I will come out on top I, I'm going out there to finish Pedro and and that's that that's that's what I'm going to do on uh, on February 12th what are you going to be doing on the plane? I always uh, like hearing fighter stories. you got a huge uh, trek here. Do you bring movies ahead of time? Do you bring any video game system? Do you bring a book? What, and napping is obviously going to be part of it. Uh, yeah. what, what are you going to be doing on the plane? Have you thought about that yet? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably going to bring a couple of books. Um, I've got a couple of books on my phone anyways that I've downloaded, so I'll probably, I'll probably get stuck into some of those. I don't know, but there's something about you feel like a bit more bored reading it from your phone as opposed to from a, like an actual like physical books so i might have to bring some of those there um but yeah i'm probably just going to download a crap ton of stuff on netflix I, i've watched power literally about three times this would be my oh, fourth cool. time watching and i've just started watching it again and i think i'm just gonna have to download the series and 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 just literally i reckon if i get through all of that that should last me most of the flight so obviously they'll have in flight entertainment but yeah, I'll download a load of stuff on my phone and uh, and yeah, bring bring a couple of books. And uh, I know my friend, uh, my training partner, Will might might have a couple of stuff on 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 his phone as well. So hopefully we'll be sitting together and I'll be able to 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 ride off of that one. You know, any good books you're reading or about to read uh, that that you plan on bringing with you? I was just curious. Any anything? Any like name name one book you got right now that uh, you're looking so, to dig into? Uh, Forty Eight Laws of Power um, is a really good one. Uh, there's the there's a secret of the millionaire mind. These are like kind of like I don't know. It's it's stuff that like kind of stimulates my mind a little bit, and I, I really yeah. like. Uh, I'm definitely going to take Mike Tyson's autobiography because I've actually I've always read it in parts. I've always read it on trips, 
and then I'll kind of stop when I got home because I'm just like all over the place. But when I'm sitting down, I'm I'm definitely going to have to finish that one because it was very interesting whilst I was reading it. So that's awesome. And that's excited to see you back, man. UFC 284. It's right around the corner. If there's anyone you'd like to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors, any social media, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, I've got I've got to say, uh, like I say, thank you for my my, my teammates, training partners. Um, obviously, my dad, Will, Lucas, Danny, Raymond, BST Academy, um, Pure Jiu Jitsu, Aria uh, has been a massive help. Ed Ingemels, uh, you've got Hodge Grace's Academy. Um, we've got Prometheus Wrestling, uh, sorry, <laughs> has helped me out a lot. Um, Distinct Physio, Leanne's always helped me out. Uh, Fighter Shop UK. Um, Dennis and Sutherland actually has helped me a hell of a lot. Uh, the Coachellas have helped me massively um with with with, with fights um and uh paul burgess has also helped me out in the past as i'm jaffrey and yeah like you know just like, like i say all, all all my main training partners all, all my friends all my family all the people that are close to me uh just love you love you all guys and we're, we're gonna go out and do the business uh on february 12th